Hi, uh, my name is Steve Ewart. I work for Havoc. We're well known for physics, but we've actually got a, a number of products. And I'm going to give you a brief overview of all of them. Um, we'll try and make a, a nice story behind all of them. So we've got physics, we've got a destruction product, we've got animation, we've got an animation tool and a runtime. We've got a cloth product, an AI product, a script product, and uh, last week we also have acquired uh, the Trinity engine, which my colleague Andrew can talk about later. I'm going to take you through all of those products as quickly as possible so you have one nice spot to see everything and play with them all. So this is a, a whirlwind tour of the, all of the Havoc products. I'm going to start with Havoc Physics. And what better to show off Havoc Physics than Havoc with Havoc Destruction. Havoc Destruction is all about generating the art content for having a dynamic environment and objects that can break apart. Um, it's also about the control mechanism to hold them together. So not only am I automatically generating the assets for this um, bookshelf, I can manipulate this and have it held together in a structural way. So Havoc Physics is a very fast, multi-platform, op console-optimized physics engine. And it's running from everything from a high-end PC to a phone. And we're running the, the same technology. So physics is also an issue with characters. We want to have characters that can fall downstairs and, and have a, a realistic physical in, impact on the environment. In this particular case, we've got a, a zombie character that's, that's being animated. But we can also destroy him and have physical effects being applied to the animation as well. So we had to have a, an animation product in order to be able to bridge the physics with the animation. Our animation product is, is in two parts. So we've got a fast runtime SDK. And we also have an option to do retargeting. So we've got a, a particular example here. We can create one animation for one particular character. But that anim animation can be applied across multiple characters. And we do further um, interpolation of, of the extracted motion so that larger characters will have a faster motion and jump higher. As well as the, the runtime SDK, which is handling the compression and decompression, we also have a tool. So here we can see the, the animation tool. We can see the, the exact demo I just showed you inside the tool. Um, but the tool is about combining all of the different animations together. So this is another example of a character. I want to take an animation that says a run and an idle and a walk, and I want to be able to blend those uh, nicely and get a nice effect. So whenever I play this example, I've got the character blending up from idle to walk to run. And of course, there's physics in here, so at any point in time, I can kill him off and have him collapse. And of course, I want to be able to nicely get him up again and then kill him off again. And you can see that he gets up appropriately depending on how the character is falling. So this particular character, we can also then lead into our AI product, our pathfinding product. So our AI product is all about the fast generation of a navigation mesh and having characters find a path through a dynamic world. Here we can see the character that we've just seen in our animation product being informed by the local steering in our AI product to slow down, speed up, based on all of the various obstacles that are around him. And of course, we can still have physics here, so I can have a few of these guys fall off, turn into ragdoll, get up again, or, or die off, depending on, on, on the circumstances. And this is all linking the animation with the AI with the physics, and as you saw, with a bit of the destruction system as well. What we've also got is a cloth product. So in this particular case, we're seeing a slightly more elaborate character in our behavior system. You can see over on the right-hand side is a, a more detailed behavior graph. So whenever the character is moving, I can fire off different events um, that would be, would be effectively simulated by the game. All of these things can be set up inside the tool and tested out. And we've got a much more elaborate character here, which shows off one of our newest acquisitions, which is a, a full Lua replacement, a console-optimized, use case-optimized Lua replacement, Havoc script. We've actually embedded this inside our tool as well. And the Havoc script functionality then allows us to do a very detailed character um, where we can test out and control the character's abilities inside the tool itself. So in this particular case, I'm showing docking. And I also can show how that we can handle any sort of obstacle in terms of being able to jump over walls of different heights. 
Um, just a perfect example here, a slope fl floor, uh, jumping up over a certain height and landing on the slope floor. So, this is Havoc script embedded inside Havoc behavior, and of course it can be embedded inside your own tools as well. We have our troll character here. It's showing off the animations. It's a pure skinned skeletal animation. But we can actually take skinning one stage further and apply cloth. So our troll character is here. I'm going to load up a, a real-time demo. So here we've got our same character that we've just seen in our behavior tool. And we've got a cloth being applied to this character as well. So as I move about, there's cloth on his, on his actual chin, on his belly, little bits uh, of cloth on, around his arms. So we can have from the full range of skeletal animation through skinning, through to cloth. And if we take it one stage further, then I can have a full ragdoll system going on as well as the cloth, as well as the, the blending with the animation. So we can start seeing how all, how all of these products can be modularly looked at independently and how they can be combined together to get a, a very compelling use case.